The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Introducing Macquarie ETFs. Macquarie's Active ETFs now give you easier access to the global active investment expertise and strategies that were previously only available as traditional unlisted managed funds. Benefit from the transparency and convenience of an ETF structure underpinned by the global investment expertise of Macquarie's fund managers, which offer you additional options for portfolio diversification and the potential for index outperformance. Discover everyday access to active investments with Macquarie. Visit etf.macquarie.com to find out more. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. We're going to try something a little bit different today uh, in that I'm solo. I'm sitting in the room here talking to myself. I've got some notes, but I've had the pleasure of hosting this podcast for, I'm not sure, a year or so now, I think we might be up to. And more often than not, most of the times when we wrap up recording the podcast, the guests that I've had the pleasure of speaking to would normally have a little bit of a chat afterwards, but we quite often get into a bit of a conversation, people asking me about how I do the videos, you know, what's been the 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 outcomes for the business, how do I actually do it, where do I find the time, all of these kind of things. So I thought there may be some benefit in me just kind of spitballing a little bit here. I've got some notes, but just running through how I do the videos, uh, what that looks like, the engagement, some of the views what it means for a business, um, uh, and then how I actually uh, get about doing it. So here I am. Uh, hopefully this podcast is of use to you. I'm not sure how long it's going to go for. We'll see how long I talk on the different points that I have. Hopefully it's of use to you. If you do have any follow-up questions for me, please reach out on LinkedIn. It's probably easiest where most advisors would probably find me and uh, more than happy to have a chat or answer some questions if you've got some follow-up. So my name's James Wrigley. I, uh, as I, I host this uh, this weekly podcast for Ensemble. I am a part owner of a financial planning business called First Financial, and for many many years now, I've been posting videos on the internet as a bit of a marketing exercise. Now I started doing that a long while ago. Now the first videos I posted on the internet were on LinkedIn. Uh, back then, I had a uh, I was reasonably active posting written content on LinkedIn, uh, and LinkedIn asked me to be an early uh, user of a of a of an, of an I guess an addition to the app that they had, where you could post native video. Up until that point, you couldn't post native video to LinkedIn. You had to put a YouTube link or something like that. And uh, as a lot of marketing experts will tell you, the the LinkedIn's of the world don't like it if you're trying to push traffic onto a YouTube uh, site. So I, this this opportunity came up for me to start to post a video. I had never really recorded anything, hated the sound of my own voice, and anyway, I thought I would give it a go. So we're kind of seven or eight years later down the track, and it has never been easier for you to start posting video on the internet and actually get some real meaningful business results as it is today. It was incredibly difficult back then. It is still incredibly difficult on LinkedIn, uh, but the likes of TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook in particular the way those things have changed, uh, really in the last few years, it uh, it has never made it easier for you to start and actually get some type of traction. So before I get into the how and the why and all the rest of it, before anyone tunes out, I do want to reiterate that it has never been easier to start. You do not need thousands of followers on Instagram or TikTok to actually get anywhere. You can have zero, post your first video, have that actually get to some a decent level of audience, and not long afterwards, uh, find that you start getting people reaching out to your business for inquiries around some financial advice. So TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook in particular now post their videos based on people's interests rather than audience. Years ago, Instagram, for example, you had to have thousands of people following you. 
Uh, Instagram would put the video out to a handful of your followers. It would test to see how people engaged with that video. And if it did well, they would continue to push that out to the rest of your followers and they would see uh, they would see that video. So it was all based on the number of followers that you had, much like a uh, an email marketing campaign. If your email list has lots of people on it, a few people will, land, will, will, will open your email and have a read. But if you don't have anyone on your distribution list, well, then no one's going to see your email. So uh, uh, Instagram. And Facebook used to act like that. Then a few years ago, TikTok started blowing up. TikTok did things differently. TikTok uh, started uh, showing videos to people based on interests. Uh, there's something called the For You page on TikTok, and, and that's where a lot of people kind of end up being discovered in that the, the the machine, the algorithm, as it gets called behind the scenes, puts videos in front of people that they think may be interested in your video and has nothing to do with the people that are following you. Uh, Instagram and Facebook very quickly followed suit and, and updated the way that they push videos out. Uh, so, for example, my Instagram page, going back a couple of months ago, I was lucky if I had a few hundred followers on my on my business Instagram page. One of the videos that I had put on Instagram a number of months ago, just somewhat out of the blue, started showing up in people's feeds. People started interacting with it, commenting, liking it, sharing it. Uh, within the space of about three weeks, that video went from went from maybe 150 views to it's now over a million views, and my Instagram page has gone from a couple of hundred followers, I think I'm up to about 8,000 followers now. So it can happen very quickly for a video that was posted a long time ago. So first point is that it has never been easier to uh, put some videos on the internet, get people to see them, and actually come through as inquiries into your business. YouTube does a similar thing with YouTube Shorts. LinkedIn is still very difficult. LinkedIn really only shows your videos in the first instance to your followers. And if people like and comment and share that, it will then go to a second degree connections and it can start to build a little bit of momentum there. Uh, but LinkedIn is very difficult. So the video, the video means of communicating or marketing with people, I'm a big advocate for. Not everyone is comfortable putting a phone in front of their face and recording themselves talking. Uh, but... Um, plenty of people do do it to, to great success so you know you you might be one that would prefer to write something and post that on the internet you might want to host a podcast and there's various financial advisors that host podcasts either for the benefit of other financial advisors for the benefit of their clients kind of decide on on the type of podcast that you're wanting to do so it can be written it can be audio uh, but i would argue that those means take a little while longer to build something called no like and trust so people want to reach out and and work with those that they know, like, and trust. In the past, you would got a, you would have had a referral. You know, one of your clients would have said to their friend, "You should go and talk to talk to my financial advisor. They're fantastic." And there's a kind of a degree of trust built into that into that uh, referral relationship. Uh, you can kind of put that on steroids to a to an extent uh, by posting video on the internet. So. Uh, this idea of know, like, and trust, people want to get to know you, they want to uh, like you, so the, the familiarity of posting videos regularly uh, just as a, as a consequence of that builds trust in, in that relationship and then people end up coming into your business feeling like they already know you even though you may have never spoken to them before. So on this idea of know, like, and trust, please understand that all of your existing clients all of your new clients, every single one of your clients is going to be on the internet somewhere. Very few of your clients have no presence on the internet at all. They might be watching videos on YouTube. They might be scrolling on TikTok possibly. They might be on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Chances are all of your current clients and all of your new clients are on one of those types of platforms. You want to make it easy for people to see you, get to know you, get to like you by posting across all of these uh, these platforms and the familiarity in posting regularly uh, it, it, as, a, as a consequence of that builds trust. If people have then seen enough of your videos, they'll get a sense of who you are, what you look like, what your voice sounds like. So there's no surprise in that it, there's, there can be a degree of fear in people reaching out to a financial advisor in that, I, I, you know, first of all, I don't know who James is. I don't know what he looks like. Who do I know that, I, that I'm looking for when I'm sitting in a reception uh, at a financial planning office? What am I supposed to talk about? Does this person work with people like me? All of these types of roadblocks and all of these types of fears are reasonably easily overcome through you posting some form of content regularly on the internet. So it builds this level of trust. 
you'll then find that um, as, as time goes on, that people have self-selected. Uh, so if you take TikTok, for example, if someone's sitting there watching my videos, TikTok will then say, oh, this person has an interest in watching videos from financial advisors. And then so they'll show some of Ben's videos, some of Billy's videos, and you know, all, all these other advisors that are putting videos on TikTok, for example. So quite often, I'll have conversations with people where they've might have watched one of my videos to begin with, and then and then the algorithm starts showing them videos from other financial advisors, or it might be the reverse. They might have seen someone else's video, they've watched that, and then all of a sudden they're showing mine. Uh, the fact that they've reached out to me or someone else, there, there's a degree of self-selection going on. Of course, people might be talking to multiple financial advisors before they decide to land on on you, and and you know kind of hope that that does happen to a degree. But chances are they've self-selected and if they want to reach out to you, they've chosen you for a particular reason, particularly if if they've been watching these videos. And so then it really just becomes about you articulating that you can help them with their problems if you can actually help them with their problems. Articulating your process, that client's self-selected, they they already want to work with you, they want to understand the process, then you just need to deliver on it and uh, and they become a client. So this um, the step from... A first inquiry through to this person agreeing to be a client and paying you some type of fee for some type of service becomes a whole lot quicker than it would have been historically where you might have had a referral from an accountant or a mortgage broker or a lawyer that's you know that there's, there's a degree of trust in that referral being made but it's going to take them a whole lot longer to warm to you versus if they've been consuming your content on the internet for a period of time so no like and trust. I'm a big advocate for. I don't think there's any faster way for people to build this this idea of no like and trust through video. Uh, I would encourage you to um, come to terms with that. Uh, practice recording your voice, your videos. Get used to it uh, because it will be good for your business. So, lots of people ask, as I was saying before, when we I do this podcast at the end, they 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 want to kind of get some insight into how we do it, why we do it, and 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 how it's working. So I want to point out that I've been doing this for a long time. So as I said before, it uh, it was a whole lot harder in the past to do it, not only from a getting some type of traction in terms of people coming in to want to speak with you, it was also a whole lot harder from a technology perspective. It used to take me for one video that might be two or three minutes long that I was putting on on LinkedIn. Uh, chances are it probably took me about an hour of messing around with recording the video, uploading it somewhere, trying to get captions, burning that in to try and make that uh, easy for people to consume, it took an incredibly long amount of time to do so. Um, It's now a whole lot easier to do that through some apps and bits and pieces that I'll talk about in a minute. So my experience in the very beginning, there was nothing, 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 nothing coming back in in the way of, in the way of, um, uh, a new client work. I got plenty of job offers, which was the uh, uh, kind of bit of a surprising thing that, that came from it. Uh, many people I keep in contact with now, but I had a lot of people reach out and offer me jobs as a result of, of what I was doing. As I said, that wasn't the intended purpose of it. And then there's, there's also, particularly from LinkedIn, uh, quite an amazing recruitment drive a, as a result of it. So in, within our business, we've managed to employ uh, a number of amazing people that have come about because of my efforts of posting video on uh, on LinkedIn in particular. Lots of financial advisors are on there, whether they're young advisors, old advisors, and everyone else in between, associate advisors, client service, you know, coming out of uni, all the different stages of people in that advice process. A lot of them are on LinkedIn. And so, we've, as I said, we've recruited uh, a number of great people directly from there just by me posting videos about the things that we do with clients and then just saying every now and then, hey, we've got an opening for an associate advisor, anyone interested in applying and we get some some good people. Now, in the last few years um, in particular, and this is really off the back of TikTok, but it's elevated every other platform where I post content as well because of the way the, the these platforms have changed, the distribution of video, uh, we now get a huge number of inquiries through through the business. So, People come in at, in a range of different ways. Uh, there's a Calendly booking link on my profile, and I'll talk a little bit about how I do things in, in a minute. There's a Calendly booking link. They come in through uh, just website inquiries, you know, contact us type form we have on our website. 
uh, and then people just calling out of the blue, calling the office, asking to talk to me. We're probably getting 30 inquiries a week at the moment. So it's it's a high volume of inquiries. Certainly not all of them become clients. We couldn't cope with them all being clients anyway. But there'd be 30 inquiries a week that are coming in through all of these different sources that me and a number of other financial advisors in our business are then making contact with. A proportion of them uh, want some form of help, and then we and then we kind of uh, go on with the normal financial planning process that we we would have had from any other type of client inquiry or client referral. Uh, so the the sheer volume of new client inquiries we get is is huge. It keeps half a dozen of us busy, uh, and then you know as the, the 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 dollars kind of roll roll from there. So it, it is a business we are trying to grow, like like a lot of you probably are too. Uh, and you know, it's it, we're probably running at a rate of several hundred thousand dollars a year worth of new businesses being generated because of videos that are posted on on the internet. So, uh, First Financial is a, a is a big kind of long, well established business with with big client bases and 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 some some decent clients. Uh, you know, several hundred thousand dollars a year worth of new business from from one source is um is a big boost to 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 such a business. So. Um, the getting onto the what do I use and how do I how do I do it? I want to I want to step you through uh, some of the apps and things that that I use, some of the equipment that I use to do all of this. But before I get into that, know that it does take some work. So you know we're not paying a a marketing agency. No one's doing this for us. It's it's me doing my own videos and I do all of the editing and the posting and everything myself. Uh, so it takes some time. It absolutely takes some time out of the day when you would otherwise be doing something else. But understand that the distribution of these videos is free. So other than me spending some time during the day doing it, doing the creating, doing the interacting with people, which I'll talk about in a minute, outside of that, everything else is free. I already have the phone, the apps and things that I use. The, the subscription, the annual subscription is insignificant in the scheme of things versus the the uh, the work that comes back our way the distribution of it is free now it takes some work but it is free we are not paying an agency or anything to do it and i think the best results are when you do it yourself uh, it's very easy to kind of hide behind an agency coming up with some instagram posts or some videos and things for you but they're not really you I think the, the best results are if you take responsibility of this yourself, if you're the business owner, if you're the advisor, if you're trying to, to find some new clients for your business, I think you need to take responsibility of doing that yourself and be you, 100% you, uh, and, and post everything that, that you're up to and the clients that you're working with. You will have a far better result than if you have some polished video by some marketing agency or something like that. It's not going to work anywhere near as well. So what do I use? It's really quite simple. I have an iPhone. It's a fairly old one. It's not a terribly new one. I think it's an iPhone 13. Uh, I use my iPhone to record and edit and post. Everything is done on my iPhone. I don't use a computer for any of the, the content creation. There's my iPhone. I have an external microphone that plugs into it. The particular one that I use that I've had for a, for a number of years now uh, is a Rode uh, SmartLav Plus. I think it cost maybe $100 or something like that. Uh, so you want to make sure that you can get some pretty decent audio for, for it. People will, people will deal with the video not being great or it being shaky or you know the, the lighting not being amazing. But if someone's listening to the video, they've got their headphones in or whatever, and they're listening to the audio, they won't be able to deal with with poor audio if you've got a lot of background noise or wind noise or something like that, which often happens if you're just using the phone, particularly outdoors. So an external microphone. I then use a tripod. Uh, for most of my videos, I set up a tripod somewhere to keep the camera nice and still, albeit there are a number of them that I do when I'm walking between my car and the train station or the train station and the office. Those videos work as well. Uh, and then uh, I use an app called Captions. I have the paid version of Captions. I pay the annual subscription fee. Again, I think that's maybe $100 a year or something like that. Nothing terribly expensive, but the Captions app is an incredibly powerful tool for generating the captions on the video. So lots of people will watch your videos without uh, the volume uh, up. They might be sitting on the train or the bus or something commuting to work. They might not have their headphones in and not quite often have the volume down really low. 
Uh, you want to make sure that there's captions appearing on the video so that people can read what's going on and still consume your video without having to have the headphones in. The captions app does an incredible job of picking up your voice, converting that to text, and then you have a whole range of different options around font colors and styles and you name it, you can do it. The app has far more options in there than I actually use it for. It's a fantastic app. And then I may also do a little bit of trimming of the video if there's some big pauses, for example. If, so if I pause for a moment whilst I'm trying to think about what am I going to talk about next, I'll chop out some of those pauses and you can edit that very easily through the Captions app, export it from there. So I do all of that recording and editing in the Captions app. I do it in there on purpose because I then have that one video that I can then post across multiple platforms. So it's the one video of me explaining one particular thing that I post on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on TikTok. It goes across all of those places straight from the phone. I upload it directly to all of those different places. Uh, some people do videos directly into TikTok. TikTok has a has a green screen function, which, which can work really well. Those videos get a lot of views where you have some type of picture on a green screen behind your head and you talk to the camera and you maybe point to different things on the picture. Those videos work really well. The problem is if you then export that video or you save that video from TikTok, it has some watermarks and things on it and, and it tends to not do as well on other platforms. As I'm sure you can appreciate, Instagram doesn't really like you posting a TikTok video on their platform. So I try to do the editing separately and then I can post that one video all over the place. So how do I do it? So that, that's kind of what I use. My phone, a micro, my phone, uh, a microphone and a tripod and that app called Captions. Then how do I do it? So the ideas for my videos all come from client interactions. As an advisor, you will have client meetings or you'll be talking to clients all day, every day. If there is something that you've explained to one client, chances are there are many other people out there in the world that have a similar kind of question or, or, or problem or something that needs explaining to them. So if you explain something to a client in a meeting, just jot it down. Uh, if you're feeling really, really adventurous in, in, in the moment, once you've finished that client meeting, just get your phone out and whilst you're still kind of on a bit of a high from that client meeting. Record an explanation of, of what you just explained to that client. Now, you obviously need to not put names and bits and pieces in there. You need to make it pretty generic. But if, this, if, you, if you explain something about superannuation contributions or the age pension or whatever else it might be that you're dealing with uh, and you're on that high of just explaining something to a client, as I said, whip out your phone, record it and go from there. I tend to also use the Notes app on my iPhone so that as I'm explaining different things um, throughout the day to different people, whether it's other advisors that I might be helping them with some of their work or a client, I'll just drop down some, some brief notes in my phone of different ideas that I have. So then when I come to going to record a video, I can just look at my notes and like, oh yeah, that thing, that thing, that thing. And then I can bang out a few videos in quick succession uh, and then I've got them ready to go. I typically then, once the video, so I, I record I record using the front facing camera. I haven't yet got around to come, come to terms with using the back camera on most phones and you know, iPhones in particular. The back camera is a far better quality than the front facing camera. The problem is I can't see myself. So uh, I tend to use the front-facing camera so that I can make sure that I'm, I can see myself and I'm sitting in the video properly. Um, record using the front-facing camera directly into the Captions app. Once I've finished recording, as I said, Captions does the editing and, and puts the captions on the screen and I can pick it, uh, a font color and, and, and all the rest of it. I might trim that video down a little bit, as I was explaining before, if there's some pauses and things that I want to get out of there or, or, or maybe I've explained something one or two times because I fumbled it a bit I might edit that but in the editing you don't want to make it too polished some ums and ahs and some stumbling on words they're normal you're going to come you're going to uh, be doing that through conversations with clients anyway so keep that in there it makes your videos far more real um, then once I've done the I've, I've recorded that video I've I've exported it out of captions the the, the captions are then are then on there then typically straight away, I just post that on on uh, on TikTok or or, or anywhere else. I, I tend to not wait and try and time it for t certain parts of the day. If the video is good, it's good. It's going to do well regardless of when you when you post it. Then the next step, and I see a lot of people missing out on this step, 
is you want to, as you post some videos, you start to get some interactions, people are going to start leaving questions or comments on your video. You need to interact with all of those questions and comments. You want to be building a bit of a community around your content. People want to know that if they ask you a question, you're going to get back to them. Please don't leave questions unanswered, even if it's just a thumbs up or a smiley face or a yes or no answer. It doesn't have to be a whole encyclopedia of words. You can um, It can be short responses. But then that's also, if you're starting to read the comments and interacting with people, it's then going to give you ideas about what to post next for your videos. So both Instagram and TikTok have a brilliant feature where you can click on the right buttons and if someone's question will pop up as a box on the screen for you to record another video uh, and then you can resp- be responding back to that question directly into TikTok. Those ones I don't record via captions. I, I record them directly into TikTok if I'm responding to a TikTok question. Uh, and then you're you're building this audience, you're building this community around your content. But you want to be responding to those questions first and foremost and then reading them, interacting with them because that's then going to give you ideas of what to talk about next So then it very easily and very quickly um, means that you can be posting multiple videos every week. Uh, If you're going to go down on this this, this route and and, and try this strategy, it really is the more the better. The more time you can post, the better the outcomes are going to be. Don't do it once a week or twice a week. You want to be trying to do it multiple times a day, if at all possible. Now, if you're starting from zero multiple times a day, it sounds a little bit crazy, but bear with me. If you post one original video that you've done in captions, you, you start to get some comments and questions. It's very easy to just as it, click on the right buttons. You get that question box there. You do the response back to the uh, to the question. You can do a response in 30 seconds post and you're done. It is very easy to do. You can do that when you're walking between, as I said, I'm walking between the office and the train station. I'll often do those types of responses. So you can very easily do that multiple times a day. Remember, it is free. The distribution is free. It is not costing you anything other than a little bit of your time. Uh, then I guess how do people go from the kind of the, the, the last part of how it all works? How do people go from watching uh, my videos to actually reaching out and wanting some form of financial advice? So you want to make that step uh, as easy as possible and as simple as possible. So each of the platforms will give you the opportunity to put a link on the platforms to maybe your website or something like that. I have a link tree link uh, that is on each of the platform. That Linktree link then has a few links with inside of Linktree uh, that people can go to the First Financial website. They can send an email through to the Contact Us kind of generic email address that we have. There's a Calendly booking link, and that's the most common way that people will reach out. So if a Calendly booking link directly into there that goes into another calendar, it doesn't go into my personal one, it goes into our Contact Us calendar, where with inside of Calendly, we've put some restrictions around the number of uh, the number of calls that can be booked each day, the particular times of the day that those calls can be booked so that it's easy enough for people to make the phone calls uh, and then people will book a 15-minute phone call through there. So there's the link. Uh, there's the links is, is the main one. The Callan, the the, uh, the link tree link is the main way that people reach out. Uh, but then people will Google, uh, obviously. So they'll, they'll, they'll Google my name or, or First Financial or some combination of the two. They find their way onto our website and through our website people, we see the the traffic and what people are searching that that leads them to the website Um, and uh, and, my name and First Financial and so forth are often right towards the top of why people are landing on the website. That then, uh, they'll then browse the website, they'll get a sense of what we're up to uh, and see all the other written content that we have on, on the website and then potentially leave an inquiry directly through the website uh, and um, and then we get back to them, we call them or, or we send them another link to book in another call and, and go from there. So then once you get them, once the person's booked in a phone call, it's just like any other interaction you would have had with a brand new client. You've got someone to call, they're, they're expecting you to call, deliver on that, that promise of calling them at a particular time. Uh, chances are they've seen a lot of your videos by then. As I said earlier on, they've, they've self-selected that they want to talk to you and work with you. It's then just understanding the problems that they have. Can you actually help them articulating your process? And then you just your process takes over from from there. So that's about how it all works. Um, lots of people always asking, 
I hope for this podcast is a bit of value to you. It has been half an hour of me just talking by myself, so hopefully you're not sick of my voice by now. Uh, we'll be back next week with a regular podcast and a normal guest. But if this has been of any interest to you, please let me know. And maybe I can do another solo podcast on sharing something else that we're up to, how we do something else in the business, if you want to know more about it. All the best and uh, listen in next week. Bye.